Hi guys and welcome to my channel. It's Hila here from Saturday Night Stitch and thank you so much for tuning in. Today's post is sharing five sewing projects, specifically five tops. But before we get into that, if you love sewing and all things sewing related, then please do subscribe to my channel. I put out sewing content every week. First off, we've got Bird July 2015 style number 114. I have lost count of how many times I've actually made this top, so I think it's somewhere in the 6 to 7 range. But this one is particularly special because this was my first time actually color blocking it. So pattern details. This features a boat neckline that I absolutely love. I feel like it's a flattering fit on me. It has got two bust dots to achieve a minimal amount of shaping. It has those two rectangular gathered pattern pieces at the bottom and that just gives it a nice fluid movement. The fabric I used is a worsted wool fabric that I got from Fabworks. So it's quite strange, this is 100% wool, but just because of the way that it is woven, it is very lightweight, drapey with a good handle. And you can see on there that I interfaced it using a contrasting color and I'm showing you some of the details of my understitching and overlooking, overlocking the facing. And as usual, I do love to put my personalized um, name tag labels and I also bias bound the armhole. So in order to get that beautiful movement at the bottom, the bottom peplum is actually folded over and that gives it a bit more weight so that it moves beautifully. It's a fantastic top and I love how it turned out. So I made Another one, but this time in a Frida Kahlo themed fabric from Alexander Henry and I think it's part of the Folklorical collection. I may be wrong on that, but I will need to check. However, I was asked by the editor of Sewn Magazine, which is based over in the US, if I wanted to participate in their special Frida Kahlo issue. And I agreed to do that. So I actually made this up around May and it was in the August issue um, of Sewn Magazine. But I had so much fun with this. I did a giant rick rack on the bottom peplum there just because I wanted, I wanted it to pop just a little bit. Um, it just felt a little bit um, empty without anything to emphasize the, the dark black hair that's on those drawings of uh, Frida. So again, I love how this top turned out. It is such a fab top. And here is a steal from uh, the Sewn website. Sadly, I forgot to order the issue before they ran out of the August issue. I bias bound the armholes using a pink satin bias binding. Now this top, because I've sewn it so many times, it literally takes me less than an hour to sew it all up because it just comes together so beautifully. I don't have any fitting issues. I cut out a size 38 straight and it fits me and I'm quite happy with the fit that it provides. Um, so this cotton is like a quilting cotton, but it works just as well with this style. Next is Birda March 2019 number 110 and it's a wrap around top made in a Lady McElroy chiffon fabric and it's a giant paisley chiffon fabric that I fell in love with from the moment that I saw it. Um, so I really really love how I feel in this top. This is just one of those tops that it kind of makes me feel like I've got a lot of moxie, like, you know, it makes me feel very, very sassy. And I don't know whether that's to do with the fabric, which is super soft and comfortable to wear and just feels so great against my skin. Or it's the style, the wrap over style, which is also very comfortable because it doesn't have any strong bindings. I just, I really love it. So as you can see there, it's a little bit of a sheer fabric. So you can wear it with a tank or like I've done with a bra. I tend to wear it just like this, especially in the uh, warmer months of the year. So because it's chiffon, I used a lightweight interfacing. Let me tell you something, guys. This pattern uses up a lot of fabric. 
and I mean a lot. So you see those tie bells? Those are freaking long. And by the way, that's the hole that you thread them through. It's not supposed to be that big, but there were a few snafus when I was making this top that, oof, this was a this was a hard labor of love because number one I was sewing with chiffon fabric which is very slippery if you've ever sewn with something as lightweight as chiffon you will know that this is challenging I ended up having to use dylon um, starch with it but you know it it turned out a really beautiful top and I'm so glad I stuck with it although I didn't follow the instructions in the end because I just could not follow um, and the amounts of fabrics that were involved were incredibly uh, large amounts as you can see that is one pattern piece well actually it's not one it's three pattern pieces sewn together but and it's also supposed to be double layered which means that it's supposed to you're supposed to cut two of each of those I didn't do that um, I just did it single layer and I hemmed it and then I just put that hole on the side where you can thread it through but I think that this dress you could easily this top you could easily lengthen it into a dress which is what I'm kind of trying to show you there and I also had another thought when I was sewing it up which was that you could easily cut away those ties and you've got a really nice cardigan if you can see that, you know, it's just a really nice simple cardigan with a high-low hem. And if you wanted to, you just give it a belt. And I think that is a fabulous top. Well worth the effort that it took and all of the hassle that I went through learning how to sew with chiffon fabric. I definitely plan on making this again. I kind of feel like this make, though it turned out okay, it was more of a learning make. Up next is sweater number 417 from Grassa Patterns, which is a Russian pattern making company. I fell in love with the line drawing for this sweater and the picture of it because it has those interesting, unique side details and all of those interesting, unique uh, seam lines. So I was like, I'm going to give this a try, but I wanted to play around with some color blocking, which I did by using two colorways of the same fabric. I think it turned out well. I love this top. For the neckline, I decided to use a black neck ribbing and it just makes it pop so much. And then for the cuffs, I used a gray ribbon. So in a way, I went for texture blocking as well as color blocking. The sizing was very spot on. So with Grassa patterns, you have to select your size based according to your height and your bust, waist and hip measurements. So they sort of cater for all different heights and most different sizes. Um, the fit is quite close. Uh, so if you're uncertain, I'd rather go on the larger side rather than on the smaller side. And I was very happy with the fit. The instructions are all in Russian, so you kind of have to know what you're doing before you attempt them. But I call this adventure sewing. It's kind of like going in and just figuring my way out. I had to figure out how to add my name tag onto a sweater knit fabric. So I copied what I've seen on Jules or Borden, you know, this high end, high street, um, ready to wear things. But it turned out really beautifully and I love the look of this top. Next time that I make it though, I am going to lengthen those sleeves. They are actually three quarter sleeve, which I didn't realize when I was cutting out or I didn't pay attention to, but I would prefer it if the sleeves are longer and go up to my wrists. And I would like to try and make a dress version of this. Love it. Up next is Birda 2 2016 at number 105 and I love this top so much. I'm just going to give you a bit of a dance break. Seriously though, this top is so comfortable, especially considering that I made it out of a polyester satiny type fabric. Now this top, I was attracted to it because of those incredibly intricate looking design lines. 
I made this sort of two and a half years into my sewing journey, so this seemed like um, a really difficult project because you've got one panel that just goes from your sleeve all the way to your hem, and then you've got these separate upper panels that make up the sleeve, and then there's the cuffing. And it was just, uh, I was so proud of myself. I remember being so incredibly proud of myself for actually sewing this up. And the reason why I'm showing it to you now is because I'm making another one, which you should be seeing in another month or two. But you can see that there is the underarm panel. So you don't actually have a seam. So most sleeves, you've got the seam um, at your arm's eye, but this one doesn't. And it's just a really fabulous, incredibly comfortable, comfortable top. Thank you so much for watching and for staying until the end. I really appreciate that. And I really hope that you have enjoyed this video, that you were entertained and that you found it useful. And if you did, please do give it a big thumbs up down below. And also let me know which one is your favorite of the tops. Just go number one, two, three, four, or five. Let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't already, do subscribe. I put out videos every week. And until I see you next time, guys, a happy sewing. Bye.